Hello and welcome once again to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm, Re I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video I'd like to talk about supporting cells of the nervous system. You should already know the other major cell type for the nervous system, um, and that is neurons. Neurons, of course, are the major nervous system cell, and near, the job for neurons is to send signals to different neurons and to form memories and do the thinking processes that we do. The supporting cells of the nervous system basically help the neurons do their job. And they do that by supporting the neurons. Physically. and by helping to maintain a healthy environment for the neuron. So they help to maintain a healthy environment for the neurons. Um, I guess I could also put down here that some of them help action potentials move more quickly. Or maybe they help to speed action potentials, if you want to put it even in a more short sentence. So that's the major jobs of these supporting cells, and it gives you an idea of what the supporting cells do. I'm now going to erase this part, and we're going to go, we're going to go through some specific supporting cells, or types of supporting cells. The first specific type of supporting cell, and, and I'm going to put some larger categories on here. Um, Whoops. Supporting cells of CNS. Supporting cells of the central nervous system. The first one is oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes make myelin. In the CNS, only in the CNS. We've learned about myelin already when you learned about action potentials and such. Um, myelin is very important to allow signals to travel faster along axons. And in the central nervous system, the only cell that makes myelin is the oligodendrocyte. So think of the white matter of the brain or the white matter of the spinal cord. Those are myelinated axons, myelinated fibers, sending signals back and forth within the CNS. The myelin of the white matter in the brain and the spinal cord is made from the oligodendrocytes. The oligodendrocytes make that myelin. And here's basically how they do it. And the reason I'm putting this on here is you need to be able to differentiate between the oligodendrocytes as the CNS white matter production or CNS myelin production versus the Schwann cells, which also make myelin, but they do it in the peripheral nervous system, not in the CNS. For the oligodendrocytes, they have a cell body or soma, and from it processes come out 
And what I'm drawing, these lines that I'm going to draw here, these are axons. Those are axons within the central nervous system. And an oligodendrocyte will have an appendage that comes out and surrounds part of the axon and makes myelin. And any axons within the neighborhood of this oligodendrocyte, the oligodendrocyte will send out a process and make myelin in that, along those axons. If you remember the way Schwann cells do it, and I can go back to this model from our lab, each little unit or area of the axon has a Schwann cell wrapped around it. So the Schwann cell itself wraps around the neuron. The cell body or soma of the Schwann cell is part of this little area here. Notice that that's very different from the way the oligodendrocytes do it. So that's oligodendrocytes. Um, I'll put the next one down here, and then I'm going to have to make some room. Ependymal cells. The ependymal cells line cavities of the CNS. So ependymal cells line the ventricles of the brain, the canals of the brain, and the central canal of the spinal cord. All of those areas are lined with ependymal cells. These cells also have cilia on them, and the cilia help to move the, spinal, uh, the cerebral spinal fluid. Ependymal cells also can contribute to the, um, the cerebral spinal fluid. So that's basically it for ependymal cells. That's what they, that's what they do. They're usually um, cuboidal cells, so they're a type of epithelium, a type of simple cuboidal epithelium. In fact, we should probably call them, call it endothelium. type of simple cuboidal endothelium because they line the inside of something. Epithelium is lining the surface and an endothelium is lining the inside, an inside cavity. So that's oligodendrocytes and ependymal cells. I'm now going to make myself some room. Uh, microglia is the next one. microglia or microglial cells. The microglial cells um, are actually a type of white blood cell. But they're not seen in the bloodstream, obviously. They're only seen in the central nervous system. But I tell you it's a type of white blood cell because that's really what these cells are. They're um, small white blood cells that are able to travel around the central nervous system. Uh, and they, what their job is, is phagocytosis. Of debris. And I would also say defense. If there's an infection in the brain, the numbers of microglial cells increase and they start to try and deal with that infection. 